Hey everyone, this is Blackbinder, and welcome back to the Let's Play of Tales of Majayal with the Necromancer on Insane Difficulty. Now, uh, I think what we're going to do for Celia is just um, maybe look for some darkness and cold resistance items. Eventually, we need to kill Urkus first, though, and then we'll go back and try her. That's That's my plan right now, but basically that's all in the future because... We can't kill Urkus right now either. So let's try to find the ruined compound. Or the, no, the uh, hidden compound. The ruined halfling complex or something else. That's the uh, slime pits or the where you get Oozmancer. Uh, what the hell was it called? I don't even remember what it's called. The Oozmancer place. Uh, hidden compound. Let's go ahead and do that. We might be able to do the uh, Golem graveyard too. Always seem to have issue with that with that place though, so it'll be a crapshoot whether we can actually finish it or not. All right, we got a summoner. Everyone in here, or every slaver, has a a base caster body, so everything's going to be able to cast at you. So depending on what class you are, this can be really difficult. But as a ranged class, it's not too bad, so long as you don't let any of the the uh, slaves get next to you because they are all brawlers and will grapple you and stick you in place unless you can uh, teleport away or switch spots with your uh, with a minion. Um, if you're worried about dying you should really just kill off the slaves. Um, I don't I don't think any of my none of my spells since the necromancer was reworked I don't think since they are specifically my allies, I don't think I can hurt them with my two main spells. Uh, used to be you would with Chill of the Tomb specifically, but I think we're good now. But yeah, if, if you have any doubts, just kill them off one by one. Because if you aggro one of them, all the other ones around them are going to aggro too. So having 30 thralls running at you is not exactly ideal. <laughs> Surrounding you even. 17% uh, darkness damage. We'll go ahead and keep it for the 25% darkness resistance for now. Specifically for Celia. But we'll see. I probably won't end up using it. Let's go rigor mortis. Keep blowing them up. Stay away. Infinite 500. It's an achievement. Isn't hard because of enemies. This is from Mosman. He's a mod. Infinite 500 is hard because your save bloats and corrupts before you get to it, usually. <laughs> yeah, I can see that happening. I, think it's, I don't think it's the developer's fault. I think it's the engine that they're using. It wasn't really made, I don't think, for such for 500 levels in a row. I really hope it didn't happen. What? <sighs> I don't know what he's talking about. Alright, going down a level, movement speed infusion, that's a good one. Cooldown 8, 532, but again, we can't use it. Moon and star, I think it's moon and star. These are really fun to use like on a throwing knives build because they'll proc the on-hit damage for every knife when you throw like fan of knives. So, Alright, this is a... This might be a decent uh, light. Let's go through it. Decent resistances, 17 blight and 21 darkness. 
damage doesn't matter because it's light. Affinity for light, 5%. Eh. Critical multiplier is decent. One life re regain, eh, negligible. Four spell power and 5% crit, that's good. Uh, seven light radius. And then uh, the wearer is treated as undead, which is good, but it doesn't have wretch like ours. What does ours have? Lower resistances. Same spell crit and spell power, basically. So yeah, let's go ahead and use it, since the wretch isn't healing our skeletons anyway. Which is, I think, one of the reasons I put that on in the first place. This hat has 74 life and 14 mod on it. Healing mod. This has 140, or 120 life. So we will not switch. Alright. Even if... I don't need the blood color. I always do this. I don't, I don't know why, but just remember to put your points into strength or dexterity or whatever you want. Just spend them in something and turn on your striking stance because that uh, it also gives you your flat damage reduction. You'll die quickly without it on. The only things you really have to worry about are the orcs, preferably the orc wormix, or especially the orc wormix because they can breathe on you. That was a very easy run. I usually have to step away at least a little bit to heal, but I didn't that time. Alright, let's go ahead and get ready to fight this guy. Uh, Psycho said for him the dread, ma the dread was super unreliable as well, which is unfortunate. Because I think, I don't think we can, yeah, <laughs> we've already got 10 points into it. So we're stuck with him for now. So hopefully he'll do something for us. We probably won't notice, even if he does though. Oh, come on. Impending Doom will work. It has to. Yeah, there we go. I should have started with that anyway. Now that guy, it, he can be difficult. He can jump towards you. And I think he's always a Mind Slayer. And he can hit very, very hard. So he might seem easy, but I wouldn't just always kill him. If you're not feeling powerful, don't do it. Because, I mean, look at what he dropped. It's really not worth it. Uh, kill a hate using enemy with, kill a hate using enemy on the turn your sun thingy procs. I forget what it's called. Sun's vengeance or something. Best way is to find a low level hate using enemy, play halfling, and then and then leave until you can one shot him with a crit. Well, my best way. All right, where are we going now? We want to go to the ruined halfling, the very old halfling, halfling ruins. I think that that was the case. It's been forever since I actually tried to devise a way to get fallen sun palad or fallen sun paladin. But what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna cheat it basically. Because it's not, it's not super strong. It's just a different way to play Sun Paladin. So I'm just gonna like get it, unlock it from the start. Like with Technomancer, you should have to work for it because they they have some really good spells. But from what I've heard of Sun Paladin, it's just it's not very good. What is this? Oh, he's a uh, he's a worm, a uh, writhing one. Um, 
Probably better play it safe and just teleport away. I'm sure we would have been fine, but... Oh, he, he time-stopped me there. Because he was part Paradox Mage or Time Warden. I'm not sure which. Sometimes. It hasn't happened, actually, since 1.7, but I used to... Like, a million freaking turns would go off all in a row, and I couldn't move. It's like I was time-stopped, but I wasn't time-stopped, and it would just kill me. I don't know if, like, they were lowering my speed to the point where it was basically, like, it was... They could get five or six turns off in a row, but I just, I don't see how that's possible. Lots of doors in here. I'm actually surprised the first level went so smoothly. I usually have a really rough time in here, but I do come in at like level 18 usually uh, until someone told me uh, it's a higher level area. All right, resistance cap, 5% all. This may be decent eventually. Let's see, it's a mastery amulet as well. It gives us master necromancer and age of dusk. So we'll look and see if we're actually gonna use those. Steel ring. Gives us maximum mana and stun immunity. Oh, spell power, spell crit, and even more max mana with 12 will. So this might actually be decent. We will use it instead of this one. Um, we'll keep this 26% lightning resistance. That's a lot. But it's not, it's not so much that I would keep it just for that. Um, usually... Uh, resistance items if they're like 40% in one element I will hang on to it just in case but uh, 26 that's pretty regular on a ring still have not found a short staff although I really haven't been looking so that could be why 11% uh, all damage that's not bad so we'd get 11% darkness and cold damage out of it and decent resistances, but and 13 spell power. It gets close, but I like ours better The worm nest this carry-on feat. It's not just a teleport. It actually lowers damage too uh, Okay, your feet start to continuously produce carry-on worms that are constantly crushed as you walk passively increasing your movement speed by 26% So we get 26% more movement speed just all the time You can activate this talent to instantly destroy more worms letting you jump in range 7 to visible terrain Upon landing you crush more worms creating a radius 2 cone of gore any creatures caught inside deals 70% uh, less damage for one turn so if at least one anim enemy is affected, you get 20 insanity, but we don't have insanity, so. Uh, but yeah, that's it's a really nice spell. It's uh, basically kind of like an engagement tool. You can jump up to even a really dangerous enemy and lower their damage to be pretty much negligible. Like, you could tank Atomaton for one turn with negative 70% damage. I mean, after that turn, I don't know what you'd do, but <laughs> you'd survive for one turn. I'm actually curious. It, w it should wear off immediately, right? Because his turn comes right after you're done moving. I always have... Oh, god damn it. What did he hit me? It was Rigor Mortis. I guarantee it. Nope. Bash and Smash hit me for 824. Jesus. That's a... That's a... That's, that's a skirmisher move. Yes, he is a skirmisher. Okay. That doesn't happen very often. A completely wrong chassis for a body, and he killed me with the move from another class. <laughs> so it would make sense if he was a caster body and killed me with a caster move, but he's a caster body and killed me with a freaking rogue move. I, I think skirmishers are rogues. I actually don't know. It's been a while since i played one. Well... That just goes to show me, don't stand next to enemies, even if they look like casters.
Bash and Smash is their, uh, it's basically like their big hitting move, but it also, they have to be right next to you to use it. And uh, it knocks people away. It's their shield attack. It's Oh, it's kind of like their assault, basically. Unless they've changed it since I've played them, which is possible. Let's go ahead and turn our archer into something usable. Rigor Mortis. Frost Treads, those are really good for us. All right, we've got a Reaver who is half melee, half caster, and a Paradox Mage, which is also a caster, so we should be careful here. But he split into three, which turns his damage into a third, and enemies really have issues using that to its full effectiveness, basically. Like if he used the Tenuate on me three times in a row, sure, but he's not going to do that. He's going to switch his targets among the three. The three. Like each person is going to act independently of the other. They're not going to work together to kill me. My si I am silenced. Awesome. All right, what do we want to do here? Let's do... Uh, let's shield. And then we're going to... Turn on our passive healing and then smash ourselves with the rock. Well, no, it didn't work. I tried smashing the wall, but I don't think that, that actually works. Get our guys out, our spiders, and then just move away. Like I said, they were temporal fugued, so there was no way they were going to be able to spike damage me to where I wouldn't be able to react. But then they also silenced me for seven turns, making it so I couldn't react. <laughs> Or at least I couldn't react in the way I wanted to. I almost feel like Temporal Fugue is a, a buff for you. It does make them more tanky unless you can AoE them every single time. Uh, all three of them, which is usually not a not an option. But I don't I don't mind it when enemies temporal fugue temporal fugue. Four hundred seventy-four, not bad for our invoke darkness. These guys are going to be a little bit more tanky because it's a vault, obviously. All right, let's turn on our shield and just blow them up. Uh, I wouldn't go after a vault caster, uh, like just straight up. You probably should move away, but with our five hundred and sixty-five damage shield and as much life as we have, we I'm more than welcome. I would even do it to a. Uh, well, no, I wouldn't. I would not do it to a Corruptor. I was going to say, oh, I'd even do it to a Corruptor, but no, that would be stupid. And that's not something you want to make a habit. All right, what do we got here? Glimmer Jam. I like looking at Randar uh, high-tier weapons, even if they're not something I can use. And here, here's a good reason why. Look at this. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh... 26 armor penetration, 32% physical crit chance, and 61% uh, critical multiplier. The only thing that's holding this back is its low base power. It's got 42 to 63. Like you should be finding, the, you could find that in the beginning before they took out the tier 3 weapons. A tier 3 weapon could hit this easily. So, crit multiplier, that's an insane amount of crit multiplier though. It's cool to see it. Cool to see the possibilities. I'll never get that. I'll never get that high critical multiplier when I'm actually looking for it though. Here we go. Here's a decent, uh, here's why we look at mine stars sometimes. 6% uh, darkness penetration, 13% darkness uh, damage. So this would be an, at least a possible usable offhand. It's all about seeing if you can beat the stats. You, you have to not just beat the stats of the, uh, the uh, two-hander because the you also have to, you need to get something special out of it. Uh, 
Here we go. This gives us 25% darkness damage, 13% resist all, 20 spell power, and 7 crit chance. It is better... It is better from a damage perspective. Well, no it's not. Never mind. This has 15 magic, 15 spell power, and 8% crit chance. It does not have the 25% darkness damage, but... It would be better offensively, but worse defensively, right? Yes. And it's not enough of an, an increase in uh, damage for me to switch it out. All right, do we want to give up 20% confusion and stun immunity? I really don't care about silence immunity. It happens so infrequently. It's not an issue for me. Well, except for Saw Butchers. They, they do do it quite a bit, but I can stop that by staying away. Do we want 15% coldness damage and 20% movement speed? Remember, movement speed is something we lack because we don't have infusions. Each step taken casts a ground frost effect in a radius of one around you for five turns, giving you a 20% cold damage bonus. So it's actually 35% cold bonus because this that basically always happens. Additionally, any, an, any enemy standing in the frost has a 20% chance of talent failure, which is also a decent thing to have. So... I will be switching it. Probably. I, sh I should be able to avoid being stunned. Avoiding being confused is not a possibility, though. Clear mind. These are okay, but I... Or they sound okay, but I've never actually used them for their for what they do. It can be used to remove one confusion or silence effect and prevent the application of one detrimental mental effects for five turns. Huh. Oh yeah, this one has cold penetration, so no, we're not going to switch it out. And I would honestly, it sounds good, right? What I explain, I just never end up using it. But that's probably user error. This little white stuff around us, that's literally everywhere. That's the effect of those frost treads. All right, he just yanked us towards him. I think it was the that that one. Go ahead and shoot it here. Look, we can hit everybody, and it'll go off instantly. So it'll kill the Magus, and then we can kind of start focusing. It says it's going to hit there, but I don't think it will. Did it? I don't freaking know. It shouldn't have hit there, though. Who is hitting me? Oh, I'm hallucinating. All right, what do we got here? Gestalt, so a Psy Shot slash Reaver. So let's... I don't think that that... Psy Shot's a Mind Power, Reaver's Spell Power, so we should be okay, but it is a Ran boss, so we will treat him with the respect he deserves. Kind of get rid of the days so we can actually do damage. I did have a Lord of Skulls on my mage, but he was not paying attention I have just beaten a game for the first time uh, Operencia I don't know if you guys have heard of it it's actually a decent game um, the scout sucks, or the ranger or whatever class sucks, but the warrior and the mage are both pretty unique. They are both... Like, it's it's fun to play through as both of them. Although the warrior is better. His offense increases with his defense, so it makes him better. The mage, I think, does a little bit more damage overall, but, not, but he also can die in one turn, and not even taunt's going to save him. That is called uh, Operencia, by the way. Oh, it's a it's it's like Legend of Grimrock, except with turns of turn based battles. Probably should have thrown that in there.
All right, we're going down one more level. What level are we on? We did not run into Pompland, so we don't get the ogre secret area. But that's okay. That place is super annoying because the enemies spawn out of vats. So, like, uh, you gotta wait for them to spawn, basically. Here we go. We found our short staff. Hold on, it's right here. All right, Mage Warrior Short Ash Star Staff of Might. It's uh, I think Mage Warrior is what is what makes it a short staff. But um, let me look here real quick. Does it have anything we actually want? Fifteen darkness damage, twelve spell power, and eleven percent eleven percent spell crit. That is just enough spell power and spell crit that we might be able to use it, but not until we get that forty percent darkness damage uh, shield. Those two together should make it better than this one. Basically a little bit more darkness damage and a little bit more spell crit. Oh, and then the defensive stats of the shield too, of course. Is it worth spending a category point to get Meditate for Equilibrium Restoration for Anti-Magic, or are there better ways to manage Equilibrium? Not worth it at all. Yep, that would be my mine as well. That would be my opinion as well. God damn it. We got a Brawler, and he combo kicked me, or what? What did he use? Come on. Jesus Christ. Look at that. 11, 1,160 damage. But what did he actually use on me is what I want to know. Really? I guess it was only dominate. Hmm. Jesus, man. So many spikes. Once we passed the uh, basically all the tier twos, we didn't die until what Celia. Thank you. I will rest for a while. I'm gonna have to use my most powerful uh, shield. None of my guys died either. <laughs> Thank you. I am ready to go back. I will. How did you even hit me? I must have. Oh, I was over there when when I started. Yes, target myself. What happens when you don't look at the enemy standing right next to you? Which I rarely ever do. I kind I do it more often on uh, when I'm making a video than I do any other time. I wish they all, every single class, like as a uh, okay, every single class should have a passive that they have to have on if they're an enemy. That. It doesn't have to say what they are, but this guy, I know what he is because he's got these little void stars. He's a uh, he's a cultist of entropy. Every class should have that. Um, pretty much a lot of them do, but Brawler would be one that doesn't. And Brawler is one of the people you don't want to stand by, even though he killed me with a cursed move. <laughs> Doombringers are usually easy because they like to wraith form all the time. Or they're easy to spot because they like to wraith form. Okay, he's got bone shield on. You know what? Let's just let him come over here. Get out of that corner. All right, 
Alright, we got somebody who ran at us. He's grappling us. Let's move away. Remember, you can move away from a grapple. If you've got a minion, you can switch places with. Otherwise, you have to teleport, I think. I don't think there's any other way out, but... There's too many ways to get out of things in this game, so don't don't quote me if I say I don't remember anything else. There might be something else. Looks like you can. I would think so. Can you pick up the Blighted Summoning Prodigy as anti-magic follower? I would think so. It's not something I've ever tried before. All right, so what do we do here to save him? First things first, you have to get in between them. And again, that's that's not gonna, it's not for sure gonna save him. The problem here is I want to lower his damage because he's also a shadow blade. So if he hits me with flurry, I'm gonna die. So I'm going to carry on feet him over here. That way my guides can get in. Then, what do I want to do here? Let's try to knock him away by hitting ourselves. I want to knock him that way. Although, it would be smarter to knock the yeek away, wouldn't it? Alright, we bought a turn. Uh... Yep, I knew I was going to miss it. That's what I should have done first, to summon my treants. I have no instant teleports, so I need to actually just move. All right, he didn't kill him, so we should be okay. Gotcha. Yes, I saved you. Well, you seem to need help. We are now a follower of the way. What does that give you? It gives you 15 mental save, meh, and 10% confusion resistance, which is awesome. And it's just permanent. This is the tunnel to the Yeek area, the island of Rel, apparently. I did not know that that's what it was called. Merc Vagrant. Uh, no, terrible, awful. Lots of life and mana, but otherwise nothing we want. Warm Breath is really good find if you find it early for pretty much anyone, because it gives you Fire Breath, which does 139 fire damage over three turns in a radius six, or a cone six, which is really, really good. Holy cow, this is almost perfect. If that resistance penetration was something we could use, this would be a perfect item for us. Uh, changes resistance penetration to 20% physical, four life regain, uh, negative 80 life, and plus 100 life. So we get 180 life, and it's got a healing mod of 20%, and uh, it can be used to create a shield absorbing up to 206 damage on yourself and all friendly characters within 10 spaces. So very, very nice. We probably will use that. I don't remember what we have on. Oh, it's, it's our resistance penetration one. So we're going to give up uh, a decent amount of damage for 180 life and some healing mod. I'm going to do that for now. Because if you haven't noticed, I've been getting fucking almost one shot. But not necessarily one shots because I'm almost always not completely full life. But still, I'm going to call them one shots. Now, if you had killed the tiny little skeleton in there, the ogre place would show up over here. But again, it's a very annoying place to go to. We will do the mark of spell blaze. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're going to uh, kill the grand corruptor though. Well, we should be able to say, fearscape isn't a range ten ability. We should be able to stay out of its range. Especially with our pets to uh, play with him while we shoot him from afar. Alright, what you want to do here is use your Rod of Recall, cancel it, and then auto rest. Nope. Okay, normally there's elementals here that fight with the elves and... They'll kill some of them, and whoever dies, if it's a rare or above, you'll get experience for it. I wonder why there's no elementals. Maybe it only happens during a. Uh, God damn it! Only happens during a 
thunderstorm. I don't know. All right, we need to kill him quickly because we can't survive in Fearscape for very long. All right, I want to get away. Trying to get around the corners so they can't see me. Then we'll poke back out and shoot them at our leisure. Leisure. Anybody ever played Leisure Suit Larry? It's the only game my parents had when I was very, very little. So I had to play it. So it was before I knew that I liked games. Leisure Suit Larry is a game trying like you're a very tiny balding not attractive person but you try to get laid by the hottest women that you can find <laughs> it's actually a pretty good adventure point and click game so i don't want to say that it's not but probably not something a two or three year old should be playing when i was three i i saw my one of my mom's boyfriends uh, playing video games but back then the only real way to install stuff was through DOS like Windows wasn't a thing back then or if it was we didn't have it so I had to navigate DOS at 3 to open up the stunt car game ouch okay I think we're good we killed him no we did not so we'll move over here we need to use our heart of push. I told you it'd be useful. But yeah, that was that was what solidified me as a, a computer gaming person at a young age. Navigating DOS as a as a three year old. Which you know, I went back to do that because I wanted to play uh Eye of the Beholder, this this is it Eye of the Beholder one, two, and three? Yeah, 1, 2, and 3. I didn't get into 3 because it sucked, but I played Eye of the Beholder and then Wizardry 6, 7, and 8. But uh, you got to use DOSBox, and it's like, how the hell did I do this as a child? <laughs> I was able to do it, but, you know, my old, old person brain didn't work so good. Come on, let me out. All right, we are going onward. Ooh, Sun Justice. What does that do? Uh, 32 Vim, not bad. 30 Spell Power, not bad. 11% Spell Crit, decent. But no, it's nothing. Just a regular staff that they colored orange for some reason. Rot Trail. <laughs> no. It's no bueno. No, that's not good either. If I, if I see anything decent, I'll point it out. This has decent resistances, and it has track on it, but ours is better. Well, ours is what I want. It's not necessarily better. Usually going more defensive is smarter. And I, I won a lot more when I did that, but it's just I like seeing high damage numbers. Leafwalker, that's a breathe and water item, but we're already treated as undead, so we don't need it. Uh, this is a good helmet for melee, even though it says it's, uh, it, it has magic on it and willpower. It's got six armor, which is decent. Um, 30 blindness and confusion uh, resistance, which is, those are both things, like blindness on a melee, is, it's, it sucks because you can't find your way. But also it has six light radius, and as a melee, you need to be able to see far ahead. I think light radius is a little bit more important on melee than range because on range you can kind of just shoot into the darkness which i do a lot with this guy but i think uh for a for a melee to assess the situation and be safe they require higher light radius than ranged although for me i just i always get high light radius all right is there anyone around no Then rest for 200 turns. Really? It usually gets at least one person. Hmm. Oh well. The message you're looking for is a powerful creature 
parishes nearby or some crap. I wonder if I should just turn on my sh rune of shielding on automatic. I think I'm going to do that. Auto use when enemies are visible. Because it's, it's instant. And uh, there's always a way that makes it unsafe. And I'll figure it out when it happens. But <laughs> I do the same thing with time shield on my arc mage just because... If you don't use it, you're gonna you're gonna die. Well, the the old archmage, the new one, uh, they have a passive shield, so you don't have to do that anymore. But does spell power matter matter on temporal warden? I would say no. But it doesn't hurt either. All right, I think that's the Grand Corruptor. Okay, so let's put someone in front of him. We need to teleport away because let's check out just to make sure what his Fearscape uh, range is. What the hell is it? Fearscape. Range five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we are too close. We'll teleport away. Shoot him in the face. Why is my shield? It's not being auto used. There is an enemy within range. Any tips for embers of rage and insane roguelike? DevGen, keep respawning, keep restarting <laughs> until you get a John that is actually defeatable with your class. Sometimes it's just not going to happen. Then go to port and if you get screwed on items you should probably restart. <laughs> For me, it was literally just a crapshoot. One, one run was easy and the rest, one, one, one run was easy and the rest weren't. Uh, they're still talking about the Temporal Warden. I, I'm honestly not sure. I don't, I don't, I don't ever care about spell power as a Temporal Warden. Alright, we are too close. Let's jump away. We're gonna jump away again because she is like one step. She actually might be close enough already. I have a terrible time judging distances. I'm stuck for some reason. Oh, bone grasp. Yeah, she. that's how she pulled me towards her. All right, we've got burning hex 103%, so I'm going to try to clear it. And I did. Awesome. We do have bone lock on, but we're at full health already, so it doesn't really do anything. I'm going to summon my treants. Hopefully slow her down. I should have impending doomed her while I was close enough, but it's just, as you can see, it's only got a range 7. And that's a very... Oh, it would be a very closely timed thing. Uh, wait, Necromancer, I see you are the worthy opponent. Powerful indeed, I can see and feel your master of the Eldritch Crafts. We are the same. What do you mean the same? We both know the strength of the Arcane. We both hunger for power. There is so much I have discovered, so much I could teach you. I just killed you. What are you going to teach me? 
Uh, this place is special. The veil of reality is thin here, forever shattered by the spell blaze. We are taking advantage of this. We can draw uh, draw on the power leeching from this place to better ourselves, to bring forth the dominion of magic. The world has suffered from the spell blaze enough. Now, what do you propose then? Let us end this meaningless fight. Have you ever heard of a group of people called the Ziggurath? These rambling madmen think magic should not be permitted to exist. They fear us. They fear our powers. Let us join forces and crush the fools. Uh, magic has a purpose. Those men are wrong, but you seem much worse. Are you sure? I have recalled out before. Uh, he said you can't leave the Dominion port. I'm almost 100% certain that I have. I guarantee I have returned. Oh well, we'll have to try it again later. I may be remembering wrong. Part of what I like about this game, by the time you move through all the the content, uh, you forget about the stuff you started in the beginning. Did she not die? Where is she? Is that her? Something hit me and I don't know what it is. Whoops. Love that Windows key. I need to disable it. Oh my god, I hit it again. Alright, let's get our spells, or our pets out. I don't think we killed her. I didn't get the pop-up, did I? Maybe she teleported and is stuck in some trees or something. Secrets of Eternal. That's how he went invisible there. There she is. Okay. 1% <laughs> life. Son of a gun. Let's uh, throw our trees up there so they can walk towards her she she'll target them before us where is she oh our trees get uh, bone shield too did you see that where the hell did she go Titan Dreadnought. I don't know what that is. It's an Embers of Rage thing, I'm guessing. Son of a gun! See? She's in the trees. There's nothing I can do about it, because I can't get within range to hit her without getting in range of her Fearscape. I just have to let my skeletons do the work. There we go. He got him. We, I was trying to break through her uh, bone shield. All right, we got darkness resistance. We'll keep it for Celia, just in case. Robo Force, it's a mind power thing, I think. So we're not going to use that. Um, 
No, crap. No, not good. All right, let's go on. Actually, you know what? We're at 50 minutes. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> so, um, where are we going next? We might do Dreadfell next. I don't think there's anything else we can hit before we go east, so I'm fairly certain uh, that's where we're going next time. Um, I might leave and try to kill Urkus before I get to the Master, uh, because he it's also very good to have Disperse Magic for him as well. So, um, if you see anything you like, leave a like or comment, let me know, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll get back to it here in a second. So, uh, we'll see you guys.